Spring has finally sprung in these here northern parts and as I get filled with an irresistible urge to purge the last remnants of Madame Winter for now from all the nooks and crannies in my workroom, I am finding myself woefully without a suitable apron to do so with. Let us remedy that. This is an extreme example of why I have just been straightening the edge of my linen before drawing thread on my actual pattern pieces because I don't know what what past Christine was doing. I think this might have been the last time I used this linen was the mitts, the 18th century mitts, and I was just trying to straighten out after cutting out some very shapely lining pieces but I mean my <laughs> my eyesight cutting is terrible so you can really see how wavy it is but this is really a good example of why we draw thread because even with the best of your efforts and yeah my efforts are poor a straight and thinking you've cut something straight are two very different things not that I thought this hack job was straight <laughs> The aforementioned drawing of thread is a historic practice where a single thread is pulled out of a usually plain woven fabric in order to get an absolutely straight line to cut after. Or you can pull out the thread carefully with a needle. This can be a bit tedious, especially if you have a fabric like mine where the thread likes to snap but it is so satisfying when you finally wiggle it loose from however much of your fabric you have left to do. My eyesight is still not the best, so I often opt for the tiny snips lest I undo all the hard work of drawing thread in the first place. Either way, I am going super easy on this pattern just doing one width of fabric for the apron and two narrow widths for the waistband. You could also pull your waistband from the length of fabric for the apron because it is certainly wide enough and then some. I guess, technically, both versions are zero waist, but it somehow feels a bit disingenuous when I don't really need to use this much fabric. Next up, we are folding in all the edges that will not get tucked into our waistband under the watchful eyes of our resident void. To stitch up our apron friend, I am using linen thread. It is very strong on its own, but really benefits from just a little bit of beeswax to keep it together as we pull it through the fabric again and again. To attach our hem, I am employing a hemming stitch, but one I secure every handful of stitches or so. You are trying to catch only two or so threads of the bottom fabric for every stitch to make it less visible from the front. I was also taught that keeping your stitches as parallel to the hem as you can manage helps too. What if we, hear me out, because what do you want to use your apron for when you're not cleaning and wiping your hands of it? You're carrying stuff in it. So what if we take this little bit of very thin linen ribbon and our bodkin and we thread the entire hem all the way around? I think we could potentially get a secret but very useful additional feature. 
I am also securing our linen tape on either end with a handful of backstitches. I have gotten enough drawstrings lost in hems over the years not to. Next, let us add just a little bit of embellishment. I have this piece of bobbin lace that is almost, but not quite, the width of our linen. It is sturdy enough that I think it will work well for an apron. And again, I am opting for hemming stitches to get all the way out to the edge. Back stitches or running back stitches would work too. And since we are clearly not getting any further on this right now, let us embark on a small side quest. Since the apron is technically zero waste, slightly excessive fabric use aside, does this rummaging in my scrap fabrics for a patch make it net negative waste? Under our overseer's ever watchful attention, we have to do the thing that makes lace, well, lacy and see-through by cutting a slit in the fabric behind it and folding it back. I can honestly say, this was my absolute give me closures all day instead least favorite part of the project. With every single snip, I felt that this time I really messed up and cut through the lace underneath. Please tell me I am not alone in this, because I had my heart in my throat the entire time. Crisis averted during Operation Snip, we fold back the edges to reveal our beautiful lace. You could trim down the seam allowances for a narrower finish, but I felt there had been quite enough cutting for a little while. Some good, soothing hemming stitches, on the other hand, would be quite welcome to settle my nerves. No, no, madam. Don't move on my behalf. the main body of our apron done, we can stitch up the two pieces of our waistband. A good, proper waistband this time, cut on the straight grain. Before we enter the rather large kingdom of running gathering thread, with a strong, thick silk thread that will not break on us. So I divided my skirt, sorry, apron into four equal parts here. As you can see, there is a lot more apron than there is waistband and that is on purpose. So our gathering thread will actually get some work to do. And now all that is left to do is to take our gathering thread and pull and make everything as even as we can. I am not going to lie. A long row of reliable back stitches was most welcome after all those hemming stitches. Appropriate, since these strong stitches are both keeping all our tidy gathers in place, but also take the tension of being tied about the waist. They are also just really satisfying to do, or at least I think so.
I don't know if I've actually ever shown this properly on camera before, but here is the front of our apron. You see the waistband is stuck to the top here, and then when you want to turn it and fold it all nicely around, you just fold it up first. So there's a fold here, and then you fold it again to get the seam allowance in, and then you fold it over your little nicely gathered area. And I almost forgot, uh, because this apron doesn't have a bib, which would give it like shoulder ties to make it easy to hang from a hook when you are not using it. And I don't fancy like tying a loop on the waistband ties and then untying it every time I wish to put the apron on. We are just gonna unpick just where this center seam is conveniently and then put in a little loop just to make it easier on ourselves. Because practicality. Yay! The remainder of the waistband that is not folded over the apron gets both seam allowances folded in and then folded again into a narrow ribbon suitable for tying with. Some extant garments even forego the fabric beyond the apron and replace the waistband with linen or cotton tapes or ribbons, which could be made fairly fast on things like rigid heddles or even purchased machine-made later in the centuries as their simplicity made them fairly affordable there too. Madam, excuse me. E. Thank you. And last but not least, we must complete our side quest. If the madam ever deigns to move her royal backside. Okay. Through this most scientific method. And since this one will potentially carry many big and small treasures, I am employing hemming stitches since they are so good at keeping the seam just at the edge of the fabric that I am doing much, much smaller stitches than I did for the hem. And with that, our new apron friend is complete ready to take on any and all dusty and dirty jobs about the house. The volume in this one is admittedly supremely excessive overkill, but it will definitely keep my skirts nice and protected, as well as give me a large surface area on which to wipe my hands. Aprons through the centuries may have changed slightly in shape and design, but the base characteristics and function remain the same. To protect the clothes we do not want to or are not able to wash as often with a hard wearing friend or two that could be washed as often as necessary. Suffice to say that I am well pleased with this new friend, simple though she is, as there is always a use for another hard working apron. Thank you to my patrons who continue to make these explorations in practical and historically inspired dress possible. Oh, oh, but the coolest feature, watch this. Suddenly it's a fruit picking apron, which I've always wanted, 10 out of 10.